Biological perspectives make a variety of assumptions about the origins of mental distress. First, they contend that human experience can be reduced to and explained in biological terms. In other words, our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are ultimately best understood as mental illnesses. And so when people are experiencing mental distress, it's because something is not working properly in their physiology. The second assumption that biological perspectives make is that mental disorders are brain diseases. In other words, because human experience can be reduced to and explained in terms of biological processes, biological perspectives maintain that problems identified as mental disorders are going to eventually be revealed as brain diseases. So eventually mental illness will be reducible to and explainable in terms of biological brain disease. The third assumption is that scientifically studying the brain will help us yield an understanding of mental illness. And so in order to comprehend why people are experiencing mental distress, we need to study the brain. And as we learn more about how the brain works, according to biological perspectives, we will begin to discover the biological causes of mental illness. The fourth assumption made by biological perspectives is that biological processes are central in understanding mental illness but social and contextual factors also have a secondary influence. So while life experiences and environmental circumstances may affect the course of mental illness, their primary cause is rooted in biological processes. That is, from a biological perspective, something like PTSD is triggered by events in the environment, but it only occurs if the person has a biological predisposition towards it. So contextual factors matter, but biological factors are primary. Fifth, mental disorders can be caused by malfunctions in brain chemistry, brain structure, genetics, and even viruses and bacteria. And so there are different kinds of biological explanations used to explain what's going wrong physiologically within the person. Your genetic makeup, your brain chemistry, your brain structures, uh, problems with your immune system, catching viruses, bacteria, etc. All of those can cause the brain to malfunction and lead to mental disorder. Neurotransmitters are brain chemicals important in neural communication. Some of them, such as glutamate and norepinephrine, are excitatory, that is, they signal that other neurons should fire, whereas others, such as GABA and serotonin, are inhibitory. That is, they signal other neurons should not fire. Dopamine is associated with psychosis, whereas serotonin and norepinephrine have been associated with things like anxiety and depression. Genes can be thought of as biological instructions for building a person. The genome consists of each person's complete set of genetic information. It consists of 23 chromosomes, which are made out of DNA, and at random intervals along a person's DNA are genes. And each gene consists of two alleles, and we inherit one allele from each parent. And some of them are dominant, some of them are recessive. Your genotype consists of all the alleles and your phenotype are your actual properties. And so your genotype and your phenotype could be different. So imagine a plant. The plant has a certain genotype, but depending on the conditions in which it's raised, in which it lives, how it phenotypically presents itself in the world might vary. Imagine two genetically identical seeds for a plant. I give you one and I take the other one. You take yours and you very carefully attend to it. You plant it in very uh, lush soil. You fertilize that soil. You water that soil. You make sure it gets a lot of sun. You care for it very carefully. I take my seed and I stick it in some um, old dry dirt and I occasionally check on it, watering it here and there, but not really being very attentive. Your green thumb results in a very lush, beautiful plant. My not paying close attention to my seed results in kind of a, a sad, sickly little plant. They're genetically identical. Their genotype is the same, 
but their phenotype is different because your phenotype is how you appear based on the interaction of your genes and the world. And that's why you should take care of the plants and I should stay away from them. I don't have a green thumb. Heritability has to do with how much phenotypic variation is due to genes as opposed to environment. Heritability estimates are intended to look at to what extent is schizophrenia, for example, attributable to genetics versus upbringing. Biological perspectives are seen as having a variety of strengths. They explain complex mental phenomena in terms of their underlying biological correlates. And this is seen as a, a major strength and a major advantage. If we can understand the physiology of what's going on behind somebody's mental distress, we have the ability to potentially intervene and help them. It therefore holds out promise that complex behaviors can be explained mostly or exclusively perhaps in physiological terms. In addition to that, it has resulted in a variety of psychiatric interventions. So there are many different drugs that people are prescribed and other biological interventions that have been developed as a result of the scientific research into the underlying physiological causes behind mental distress. But biological perspectives also come in for a good share of criticism. For one thing, some people think they're reductionistic. Reductionism is the idea that we take a complex phenomena, in this case, uh, people's psychological experience and we try to reduce it to or explain it exclusively in biological terms. Some critics contend that biological perspectives incorrectly transform too many experiences into illnesses, that all emotional distress is not a product of disease. Some people worry that biological perspectives result in an over-reliance on medication as a solution to people's psychological distress and they would prefer to see people engaging more in psychotherapy and other activities to improve their lives rather than simply being given drugs. Now that you've had an opportunity to learn a little bit about biological perspectives, what do you think are their advantages and disadvantages? Mm -hmm.